Every hour, more than half a million euros are spent on the transfer market. That adds up to 57 billion euros over the last decade. With that money, you could buy that many Big Macs, you could spend 1,000 years at the world's most expensive hotel, or you could buy Twitter. The transfer market is big business, but which club makes the most money? Welcome to Athletic Interest. To find out, we looked into the incredible geopolitics of football. Technically, Chelsea is the club which makes the most money on the transfer market. Over the last decade, Chelsea have received more than 1 billion euros from the sale of 339 players. Although only one player already makes up 10% of that total. But this is only half of the picture. Chelsea also spent over 1.5 billion euros on players. This brings the net transfer spend to minus 500 million. When you consider the amount of profit made, it is Benfica that tops the table. Despite spending 500 million euros on players in the last decade, Benfica have walked away with 600 million euros in profit. Benfica didn't just get lucky by selling a few superstar players at insane prices, they were involved in more international transfers than any other club in world football. Selling players abroad has become such a lucrative business that Benfica have doubled their money over the last decade. This is a pretty unique strategy, because making money with transfers is not an easy task. Let's look at some examples throughout Europe. These are the clubs that have made the most money on the transfer market. Notice anything? No Real Madrid, no Man City, no Bayern Munich, no PSG. Pretty much all of Europe's top clubs lose money on the transfer market. This trend is also followed when you look at the major footballing nations. England spent more money than Italy, Germany and France combined. English clubs actually lost more than 7 billion over the last decade. Here's why. English players do not often move away from their home country. This is not just because they would miss baked beans on toast. England is full of rich and competitive clubs that can offer players far better deals than their European rivals. This means that Premier League clubs usually take all of England's best talent. Exceptions prove the rule. So England is mainly spending a lot of money for players, but not selling a lot to clubs abroad. The only top five nation to make a profit on international transfers is France. This is despite having PSG in the league. French spending on the international transfer market was relatively modest for many years, before spiking dramatically in 2017. Any guesses on what happened in 2017? PSG paying 220 million for Neymar gave Barcelona the funds to purchase Coutinho. Liverpool then used this money to purchase Van Dijk and Allison. It can be argued that these two signings played a key role in Liverpool winning the 2019 Champions League. This shows exactly how interconnected the market is. One transfer can cause ripple effects across the entire continent. The transfer market is globalized, but what does that actually mean? To understand, we need to turn to David Ricardo. No, not Daniel Ricardo, this guy. A British economist who came up with a theory that became the foundation of free trade. And as if he knew we were making this video, he used goods from Portugal and England for his example. His theory was that it took fewer workers in Portugal, a country with a long history of winemaking, to make wine than it does to make cloth. And it took fewer workers to make cloth in England, a textile powerhouse at the time, than to produce wine there. So Portugal should export its wine to England, while England should export cloth to Portugal. Win-win, even if Portugal was better at making cloth as well. The idea in a nutshell? Focus on your biggest advantages and sell them to other countries. Ricardo called it comparative advantage. But now back from Portuguese wine to Portuguese footballers. Like all clubs across the world, Portuguese clubs get revenue from three main sources. Tickets, sponsorship and broadcasting. But with a population of just over 10 million and a relatively small international fan base, these three income streams are severely limited. Just compare Benfica's income from the traditional revenue streams to the champions from the major European leagues. They make 75% less, mainly because the Portuguese market is so much smaller. So how does Benfica close the gap? By selling their best players. The transfer of Joao Felix to Atletico Madrid lifted Benfica's income to almost 250 million and saw the club generate 100 million euros in profit. 
After CR7 underwear, footballers have become one of Portugal's biggest exports. It is the country's comparative advantage. How does Benfica find so many valuable players? As you'll soon find out, part of the answer is geopolitics. The biggest flow of transfers in world football is Brazilian players moving to Portugal. Brazilians eat, sleep and breathe football. Many dream of playing for one of Europe's big sides and see Portugal as the perfect stepping stone to launch their careers. Portugal and Brazil have a complicated history. After colonizing most of the territory and wiping out many local tribes, the Portuguese began to use Brazil as a global trade hub. Slaves were moved in from Africa, while sugar and gold were exported across the world. At one point, Rio de Janeiro was actually the capital of Portugal. Brazil left Portuguese control in 1822, but their shared history has created strong links between the two nations. Thanks to the common language, cultural similarities and comparable weather conditions, many Brazilians find moving to Portugal relatively simple. Portugal also makes it incredibly easy for Brazilian people to move there for work with some of the most relaxed immigration rules in Europe. About 40% of the foreign players in Liga Portugal are from Brazil. Fittingly, nearly 40% of the transfers into and out of Benfica over the last decade have involved Brazilian players. David Luiz and Ramirez both moved from Brazil to Benfica at a young age. Benfica sold them for a combined profit of 40 million euros, while both players won the Champions League with Chelsea. Benfica's most profitable market is actually Portugal. Thanks to the country's small landmass and population, it is very easy for Benfica scouts to look for talent. The club has several training centers located close to major population areas, making it easier for young kids to play for the club without moving away from their families. João Felix, Renato Sanchez and Ruben Dias were all drafted into the club's youth system and sold within a few years for a total of 230 million euros. Another factor is that Portuguese football is incredibly uneven. Benfica received around 18 million euros for entering the group stage of the 2022 Champions League. That is the same as the entire squad value of league rivals Pars de Ferreira. Benfica take advantage of this financial disparity to snap up local talent at bargain prices. In 2015 they paid 500,000 euros for Rio Ave goalkeeper Edison. Two seasons later they sold him to Manchester City for 40 million euros. But if Portugal is such a hot bet for talent, why aren't Benfica the kings of Europe? Buy cheap players, train them in state-of-the-art facilities and play them against top teams in the Champions League. Benfica's formula may be relatively straightforward, but it doesn't benefit the club as much as you might think. Benfica may seem like a competitive club when you look at the balance sheet. Before the financial strain of the pandemic, Benfica recorded seven consecutive years of profit. But having more than half of their income dependent on selling players almost guarantees that Benfica will never reclaim their place at the summit of European football. If the club wants to compete, they need to keep their top talent. Doing that would require them to pay more in wages. How does the club afford those extra wages? They sell players. It's a vicious cycle. If Benfica tried to retain players, their income stream is instantly cut in half, making it impossible to pay the wages. If they sell the player, they have no one to give the extra money to. The question is, will Benfica ever be able to break that vicious cycle? If you enjoy wrapping your head around logical challenges like this, you should check out this logic course at Brilliant. It teaches you to stretch your analytic muscles with some truly mind-bending challenges. The great visuals make the learning experience fun and intuitive. Through interactive problem-solving exercises, you'll build the critical thinking skills that are the basis of mathematical reasoning. You could also learn the statistics fundamentals and analyze the transfer spendings of your favorite club on a whole new level. Of course, there is more than that. They have plenty of other fascinating courses on topics like scientific thinking, neural networks or casino probability, where you'll analyze blackjack and poker. Brilliant is a great place to learn and best of all, you can try Brilliant courses for free by signing up at brilliant.org slash athletic interest. And if you decide to upgrade to their premium account, the first 200 to do so will get 20% off. Thanks a lot for supporting us.